welcome to the outreach ministry of Bishop Victor Gill, Prophet of the Nation. Coming to you from the Caribbean paradise, the Republic of Trinidad and Tobago. Join us right now for an experience that can change your life. Get ready for your miracle. Here is Bishop Victor Gill. Mark chapter 5, 1 through 8. Then they came to the other side of the sea, to the country of the Gadarenes. And when he had come into the boat, immediately they met him out of the tombs, a man with an unclean spirit, who had his dwelling among the tombs, and no one could bind him, not even with chains. Because he had often been bound with shackles and chains. And the chains had been plucked apart by him. And the shackles broken in pieces. Neither could any man tame him. And always night and day he was in the mountains and in the tombs crying out and cutting himself with stones. When he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him. And he cried out with a loud voice and said, What have I to do with you, Jesus, son of the most high God? I implore you by God that you do not torment me. For he said to him, Come out of the man, unclean spirit. And we will stop there. Today I want to share with you on the subject, stop cutting yourself. Stop cutting yourself. The Bible tells us that Jesus and his disciples had come into a particular side of the Sea of Galilee called the place of the Gadarenes or Gadara. And as soon as Jesus came out of the boat, the Bible said they met him a man, he encountered a man with an unclean spirit, whom the Bible says was wild and he had his dwelling among the tombs. The Bible says that this man was always night and day in the mountains and in the tombs crying out and cutting himself with stones. Here is a man that was caught in a situation. A situation from which he could not deliver himself. But when he encountered Jesus, everything changed. He was set completely free. I don't believe Jesus met the man by chance. I believe the same love that drew salvation's plan and the same grace that brought it down to man that spanned the mighty gulf that God did span. I believe that grace drew Jesus to that man. I believe every sincere cry Jesus hears and somehow in ways that we may not fathom he will come to us at our point of need. And so I believe God in his love met this man at the point of his need and deliver him, delivered him. And there are people like, like this man who are caught up in a situation and a cycle of bondage from which they cannot rescue themselves. But God cares. God cares. So my first point today 
is that number one, the demon of self-inflicted wounds. Or should I say, discerning the demon of self-inflicted wounds. The Bible says this man was inflicting wounds on himself. This man was cutting himself. And some of you might say, I know the story. I know that story in the Bible. I have read it several times. And you, you picture in your mind that old vagrant. And as some will say, that bomb that is cutting himself and crying out and so forth. But I asked myself the question, how did this man find himself in this position? This was somebody's child. This was somebody's son. How did he arrive there? I don't believe he started out like that. What caused him to end up where he was? The behavior of cutting himself, to say the least, was unnatural. Why would someone deliberately cut themselves? Why would someone deliberately hurt themselves? Why? Ephesians chapter 5 and verse 29 says, No one ever hated his own flesh, but nourishes and cherishes it. So there seems to be something deeper going on. And from my observation and experience, there seems to be a connection with people cutting themselves, hurting themselves, inflicting wounds on themselves, and the demonic realm. As a matter of fact, I have literally come across a number of cases like that. And I'm, always, I'm almost certain that some of you have too. Some time ago, somebody came to me and said, look, 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 this child cutting herself. I've heard of other cases, people cutting them, literally taking a razor blade and cutting themselves. Some people go so far, they want to slit their wrists and, 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 and commit suicide. So I realize this is not natural. It's connected to something deeper. I realize that the wounds people inflict on the body are symptomatic of deeper wounds in the soul. I have discovered that invariably in every case where people are hurting themselves, it is connected to some trauma of the past that still affects their life. Come on, let's get some real talk in here today. I realize that past painful experiences sometimes open the door for a demon of dysfunctionality. The dysfunction of self-inflicted wounds. Oftentimes, this behavior of self-inflicted wounds is related to some kind of abuse Sometimes it is 
as a result of sex abuse in the past. Sometimes it is a result of emotional abuse. Sometimes it is a result of parental abuse or parental abandonment. Sometimes it is a dysfunctional home. A dysfunctional family. Sometimes it is a feeling of, a deep feeling of rejection. Sometimes it's child deprivation. Where they did not have a father's love. Or a mother's love to cuddle up under. And give time to develop and mature. Some children had an abusive encounters. Some children have been exposed to things that they were not ready to be exposed to. And coupled with that, there is something called a law of fatal attraction. So after some people have been wounded, they are attracted to wounded people. Who can do nothing but wound them even more. There's a saying, misery likes company. And one of the saddest things about all of this is that these kinds of things tend to migrate from one generation to the next. So what, what affected granddaddy, affected daddy, and now it's passing down to the children and the children's children. But somebody needs to put a stop to all of that. And thank God for some who have gone through these things but have overcome. Somehow they have been able to maintain a composure and overcome these things. But not everybody are like that. There are some people that are still stuck because of the impact of their experiences of the past. There are people who have been stuck for years like this man. I believe God gave me this message because he's getting ready to bring out some people. And this man in the text might have been the victim of some of these things that I've mentioned or more. His soul was wounded. He was crying and cutting himself. A kind of a psychotic behavior. A kind of a psychopathic behavior. Because why would you cut yourself? And then cry. And then cut yourself again. And cry again. Oh come on somebody. And then cut yourself again. And when it heals on the same spot. You cut yourself again. And cry again. So you cut and you cry. And you cut and you cry. And you cut and you cry. And you cut and you cry. Something is not natural about that. I am trying to help somebody by showing you that certain behaviors are not natural. And I'm trying to show you, I'm trying to help you to locate, to identify the source. Because I believe once you become conscious of the real source, you are on your way out. You are on your way for deliverance. Stop cutting yourself. Stop cutting yourself. Stop cutting yourself. Number two. People cut themselves in different ways. Listen to me carefully. Certain behaviors are just another way of cutting yourself. 
certain behaviors are simply just another way of cutting one's self. When I when I see the behavior of some people, I know they're just cutting themselves. Let me tell you something. You cut yourself when you hurt your husband. The two have become one. You cut yourself when you hurt your wife. Stop cutting yourself. You cut yourself by hurting your children. It's one thing to tell a child, what you're doing is foolishness. It's the next thing to say, you're a fool. That's a totally different realm. It's trouble you're asking for right now. You're cutting yourself when you're doing it. You cut yourself when you hurt your parents. You cut yourselves when you hurt your friends. And I'm talking about friends that are true friends. Because not all, friend, not all friends are true friends. There are some friends that you don't really need. But sometimes people, they push away the good friends. And gravitate to the wrong friends. So-called friends. You cut yourself when you hurt your friends. You cut yourself, I hope you can take this one, when you hurt your pastors and leaders. Could I tell it like it is? You say, I don't care, let the pastor take that. Some of you say, well, you know, we're doing this, we're not to tell the pastor nothing. No, you, you, honey, you're not hurting anybody. You're cutting yourself. And the question is, why cut yourself? Because it's wrong. Stop cutting yourself. And you're asking yourself, where is that coming from? These kind of behaviors produce a cycle of bondage. And I want to say this, and I want you to hear my heart. I want you to hear my heart. It bothers me when I see people cutting themselves. I know there has to be something deeper. It bothers me deeply when I see people inflicting wounds on themselves. Why would anyone want to inflict pain and scars on their lives? I realize that hurting people can misunderstand you even when you go out of your way to show them love. Could misunderstand and misinterpret love. As a matter of fact, some hurting people are not accustomed to love. So they're not comfortable with love. They want it rough. But you are cutting yourself. So I'm saying, yes, there are different ways of people cutting themselves. And listen to me, although I might not address everything from this pulpit. Because of, a, because of the abundance of years of experience. And because I may not say everything that God has showed me, I can assure you that the bondage many, you are, many of you are in, it has been self-manufactured. But this is what bothers me. So I look at things and I observe things and you try to show people love and you realize the cycle is still going on and, and the cycle and the enemy is there. You try to address the thing and, and the thing will probably, you're against them and you, you stand back and, and everything you do fail and, you, and the thing keeps going and it keeps going and it keeps going and you know they're not coming out if certain things don't change. Life is like a keyboard. If you want Music, you have to press the right keys. Stop pressing the wrong keys. Point number three. Looks can be deceiving. Hear what the Bible says. Verses five and six. And always night and day he was in the mountain and in the tombs crying and cutting himself with stones. And when he saw Jesus from afar, he ran and worshipped him. You see some people, by the way they look, you would never suspect 
that they are cutting themselves. Some people, the Bible said, he ran and he worshipped Jesus. Some people, the way they worship Jesus, the way they chop up, told up, the way they yard up, anti-healer, you will never suspect that there's a problem in their soul. Only few people would know that in spite of the presentation that behind your beautiful mascara if you're a woman and behind your nice little dandan as a man is a crying soul in a cycle of bondage. Only people with the spirit of discernment can look beyond the lipstick and the makeup and see that you are suicidal. That but for the grace of God, you wouldn't make it to church. Only people with discernment can look beyond the Michael Core bag and the weave all the way from the United States of America and know that you are in deep trouble. The Bible says this man was sleeping in the cemetery. This man who came and Tahila and Yada and Shabak was sleeping in the cemetery. He was hanging out in the tombs. In other words, he was liming with the dead. He was among dead people. The people some of you are hanging out with are dead people. Fatal attraction. Unsafe people. You're close to. They are your confidence. Backsliders. People who have no passion for God. Who used to be but no longer are. And you cannot even discern the difference. But you are hanging out in the tomb comfortable. Some people sleep around with people they have no business sleeping around with. Among the tombs. Crying out. Some of you going back to people that you know hurt you in the past. Friends that lick you up. They set you up. They didn't look out for you. But now you're going back to them. You're among the dead. You're hanging out in the tombs. You're hanging out in the cemetery. Cutting yourself. Cut. Hello, listen. Daddy have some rooms up in here. Daddy have some beds, mattresses, blankets, pillows. Everything is there for you. What you doing in the tombs? What you doing with these kind of people? What you doing with these backsliders? Some of you, the man that your husband don't like, you like him. The woman that your wife suspect, you have no problem with her. Come on, let me talk it in here. Because we can dance around certain things and the devil ain't moving because the devil is empowered by the word of God that you go contrary to. So the same word that he, that empowers your deliverance empowers your bondage when you when you act wrong because it's a two-edged soul so sometimes we misinterpret people's appearance and i'm saying looks can be deceiving this man came worshiping hallelujah praise the lord Jesus said, come out of him, you unclean spirit. Come on, somebody. He looked beyond the surface. 
and he saw a soul in need he saw a soul in bondage Jesus saw that this man was in serious trouble from deep within his soul he was crying for help amen beyond the veneers beyond the outward appearance this man was saying who will help me who will deliver me this man was saying like the man at the pool I've been here for so long and every time I try to step in when the water is troubled somebody else stepped in before me and I have no man but Jesus passed by and he said would you be made whole and I believe he's passing by today and he's saying to somebody would you be made whole I came to town to deliver you I'm passing this way and I may never pass back another time the same long that drew salvation's plan and the grace that brought it down to man and the mighty gulf that God did span is what have coerced me to come to you today I mastermind this thing I cause a preacher to put aside two sermons and leave home without breakfast to arrive on time for you to drop this message as a message of love to tell you honey stop cutting yourself stop cutting yourself when you miss church you are cutting yourself when you hang out among the tombs you are cutting yourself when you shout at your kids you are cutting yourself when you speak to your to your wife or your husband with the wrong tone you are cutting yourself god don't bless mess when you can't listen to your parents and not just your parents but your grandparents you are cutting yourself when there's no pastor that you submit to amen hallelujah you're cutting yourself when you show no respect and treat the pastor with scant courtesy you are cutting yourself call it what you want it's a cut and it hurts why would you want to cut yourself this is what I can't understand the demonic it has to be demonic why would you want to inflict pain why would you look at your own hand and take a razor blade and cut it and i'm saying beloved this is happening physiologically but this is also happening psychologically there are people cutting themselves by the wrong attitude we appreciate the time you spent with us today if you need prayer right now, send us an email to info at victorgill.org or call now at 1-868-266-1830 and we will pray for you to get your miracle. You can partner with Bishop Gill to bring healing to the nations by donating any amount at www.victorgill.org. Thank you. From our family to you, God bless you richly.